Well, hi there. Welcome to my latest video. Well, on this one, I'm going to show you the new router that I got for my home network. And again, this will connect between my local area network and the internet. It's the ASUS RT-AX89X, and it has a lot of really nice features to it that I'll show you as we get, get into this a little bit. Hang around to the end of the video, and you'll actually see this thing working, and I'll do some performance tests on it. Anyway, let's get this thing open up, see how it sets up, and see what we can do with it. Okay, here it is. I already took the cellophane wrap off. Open this guy up, see what's inside. It's a nice box, actually. It's actually pretty cool. Looks like this comes up first. There's nothing inside of this, just a packing. And the router itself, let's see. Oh, it's all one solid piece. What else is in here? We got uh, some instructions, basic get, getting started having trouble with who to call, and so forth. Looks like a quick start guide, getting everything set up here. What do we got over here? Oh, they gave us a, uh, looks like a Cat 7 or Cat 8, can't tell. Don't see any printing on it. Let's see how big this cable is. It's probably about four to five feet long. What else? Uh, it's all part of the power adapter. It's the absolute plug. It's got a protector on it. It's got a little, eh, nice little wrapping thing for the power adapter if you want to package it back up again. This is the rest of it, it looks like. I think it's 12 volts, but it doesn't say it clearly here. Find out as we get into it. It's got the standard adapter to it for power. Let's take a look at the router. Looks like these just pop up. There's eight of them. Nice gold lettered Asus. What do we got in the rounds? We got a bunch of LED lights on this side telling you which ports are active. Power's on or off. Looks like here we got some switches. You can turn your... Uh, different options on or off. You could turn the LEDs on or off if you don't want to see those LEDs, I guess. You want to turn Wi-Fi on or off. Now this particular one has 10, no, I'm sorry, has eight one gig connectors. This is number one to number eight. But in addition to that, you've got a WAN port, which is one gig, and it's got two 10 gig ports on it. This is one of the main features that I wanted to buy this for. It has one that's RJ45, and it has one that's SFP+. And it does a reset switch here, I guess, to reset the entire router to factory defaults. So you push that in with a, a pen point or something because it's impressed down a little bit. It's got two USBs, it's got a power, and it's got the uh, power in, DC in. I think that's it, yep. Not sure if it has a fan or not in it. I'll find that after I start using it. But at this point, I can actually uh, hook it up and see how it looks. Let me start by connecting a cable to the PC on LAN port 1. Then I'll connect the wide area network connector up to the appropriate port on the router. So let's connect the power connector. Then push the power on button. Now looking at the lights, it'll take a few minutes for this thing to initialize, probably about three or four minutes at most. So just be patient. When you finally suddenly see the power light steady and the WAN light on, then you know that everything is good. I have now connected a gaming PC up to this new ASUS router. The router itself is then connected to my local area network, thinking that it is the internet. So let's see if it assigned an address. I will go and open the command prompt and I will type in IP config, and it looks like it has assigned addresses. So it actually has the Ethernet adapter number fours configured. That's the hardwired adapter. It has an assigned network, which I guess is a default for this ASUS router out of the box, 192.168.50.0, but it has assigned the actual router itself to the dot one address, which is the default gateway. The PC itself is the same subnet, but 
Okay, so it has actually found it and configured, uh, you know, it as an initial setup. Let's open up a browser and see what we get. Looks like it's searching, but according to the manual, if I type in router.asus.com, that should be the default name given to the router, and it is. It has now opened up the initialization screen. So what I'll do here is go into create a new network. It has already defaulted to two wireless connections for wireless security. It has my 2.4 gigahertz network name. So what do I want to call my network? I will call it test24. It's automatically named the 5 gig is under 5G. And I'm going to set the wireless security. I need a password here. So I'll just show it in clear because I'm not going to keep this. This is just for demonstration purposes. So I'll say test dash wire 24. It says it's a strong password. I'll see what the uh, this one defaulted to the same one, although I could assign a different password if I wanted to to the 5 gigahertz. Let me apply that. I don't want to save passwords. So it is an 802.11ax Wi-Fi 6 and it's ready to configure it. Let me go to next and see what we get. It wants to know the name of my router login. Now, they do recommend, in general, for network security, you pick something other than admin. So I will actually call it something slightly different. I will say admin x. I will give it a password. Let's call this one, what? Whoops, doesn't like this. Let me start right off with some special character. Let's go at test 89x at test 89x. This is not what's going to stay. He wants me to retype it here. And again, this is just for tests, so I'm just going to accept this as it is. It says it's a good password, not a strong one. It's now configuring the router for initial setup. Right, and there we go. We're into the admin page. And in here I can see it thinks that the internet my ISP in this case is my home network. So it's assigned an address of 172.16.1.30. It's assigned the security. I can see the test wire 24 and that becomes my wireless password for that one. And the same thing is going to hold true for 5 gigahertz. So both of them are set up to 2.4. So we're good. I didn't change anything so I don't have to hit apply. That's what I set initially during the setup. Now if I wanted to go through and, and configure this all again, I can go back to this thing called quick internet setup and it would go right back to that, but I do not want that. So let me backtrack here. And as you can see, we have uh, one client. We could take a look at the client that's been assigned to DHCP, and it is this PC, which has a name of den-backup2. There's the IP address that was assigned, 208, on that same subnet. It's got a MAC address, and it's wired. That's what this symbol indicates. The interface is wired, not wireless. So it seems to work. We're now connected to the network. If it is, we should be able to open up a browser and go to the network. And there we are. We're actually into the things. Let me go to my YouTube. And we're in YouTube. Now this is going through the new Asus router and then onto my local area network and then from there going through my other router to actually get to the network. So there's a couple of layers that have been added to this. I can go to my channel, and there I am. I can see my channel here. So it seems to work. Let me now try to do some performance testing and see uh, what happens here. I'm going to try it in both through this router, and then I'm going to try the same PC but connected directly to my local area network and see if there's a delta. I want to see if there's any sort of additional lag created by this particular new router and how much that is. I suspect there should be a lag, but I'm hoping that it's small close this out. I don't need to change anything else here. In a future video, I will probably go over some changes I will make to this, but there's no reason for me to cover that right now. So I'll close this out. The thing is up and running. In a future video, like I said, I will tell you exactly how I wind up configuring my network. Let me try to run iPerf3 on this to my existing server that I have uh, actually on the parent network to this. It should work. Let's see what kind of speed I get. I suspect at the most I'll get only one gig because that is the connection between this router and my network. And I'm getting 937 megabits per second. That's not bad at all. Okay, what I've done is I've moved my connection from the 1 gig port on the router to the 10 gig port on the router. 
which is supported by this particular PC. So let me see what the iPerf 3 looks like. Hmm, that's not looking very good. Let me try it again. No, it's about the same. I'll have to look into the configuration and make sure I have that 10 gig port configured properly on this router because if I directly connect up to my switch in my studio, I get over 8 gig transfer speed, which I'm not seeing here at this point. So I'll have to look into this. Let's now check the internet speed using the 1 gig connection through this new router. Internet speed. That's really good. Those speeds are almost exactly the same as they were when I connect directly to my switch and my studio here. So I don't think this router has really added any propagation delay to internet speed, at least with the internet speed that I currently have, which is the numbers here are actually slightly better than I'm paying for. So I can't complain about that. So we're looking good in this front. That's pretty good. That's right on par with what I get connected direct to the switch on this PC through the 10 gig port at this point. So it looks pretty good. It looks like it works effectively. Okay, now I've connected through the 5G connection on this new router. Remember the one that I created earlier, the test-24 under 5G? Now this is not Wi-Fi 6. I don't have a Wi-Fi 6 adapter on this. I'll see if I can get one and maybe do a follow-up to this and see what the difference is. The, uh, the new Asus router that I have does support Wi-Fi 6, however. But what I want to do here is see what the performance looks like through the wireless. So let me go right to the network speed again. As expected, the download is more than 100 meg slower than what I had when I was wired. Wireless, of course. The upload is not affected by it, so it's just a download that got hurt by going wireless on this. But the Wi-Fi, at least the 5G one, works fine. I'm not going to bother testing the 2, the 2.4 at this point. Then finally, here are the composite results of the iPerf 3 testing between the 1 and 10 gig followed by the results of the internet transfer speed between the 1 gig, 10 gig, and 5G wireless.